Good morning. Who's Elam and why is God against it? We're Jeremiah chapter 49, verses 34 through 39. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah the king of Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the foremost of their might. Against Elam I will bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven and scatter them toward all those winds. There shall be no nations where the outcasts of Elam will not go. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before those who seek their life. I will bring disaster upon them. My fierce anger, says the Lord, and I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them. I will set my throne in Elam and will destroy from there the king and the princes, says the Lord. But it shall come to pass in the latter days I will bring back the captives of Elam, says the Lord. Now number nine in Jeremiah's list of nations of these judgments is Elam. You may not remember Elam. There's there's limited interaction between God's people and Elam. Maybe the first question for most of us is, well, where is it? Where is Elam? Well, if you follow a map of the Fertile Crescent and go all the way out there to Babylon, then go east one more notch between Babylon and the head of the Persian Gulf, there you'll find that's the place where the nation of Elam was, way out there. Now, in case someone's wondering whether God might miss or forget about some of the more distant lands, more distant from God's people, you know, in Israel and Judah, here's a, an answer to that question. No, nobody, nowhere escapes him. All nations, all kingdoms exist in this moral uh, space. There is no non-moral space, so we're all accountable. And so is even this kingdom, this kingdom you haven't thought about much before, the kingdom of Elam. So here's your answer. No nation escapes God's notice. Now here's something else kind of interesting. Starting tomorrow, we're going to go to number 10. There's actually 10 nations in this list of nations that are judged. God has judgments against them. Do you remember what they are? We've just been through them these last few days, and some of them maybe didn't keep your interest as much, but number 10 is quite interesting. But here's the whole list. We had Egypt, Philistia, Moab. We had the Ammonites. We had the nation of Edom. We had the nation of Damascus. We had Kedar and Hazor. Now we have Elam. And number 10, starting tomorrow morning, Babylon. Yes, God's 10th judgment is completing his judgments, is against Babylon. And there's going to be at least two dozen or more of these hits in Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51 as we look at, take these little devotional slices and try to look through there and gather in the insights. Be very interesting because right now, looking at Revelation chapter 17 and 18, where you see a lot of things happening with Babylon at the end of time that look a lot like some of the things that we see today. So we're going to get some very important insights into end time Babylon by looking at what it says about it here in Jeremiah's prophecies about the fall of Babylon and God's judgments against Babylon. So this, I think, is going to become much more interesting, this next section. At least I'm very much looking forward to it. So 10, 10 nations are judged here, and of course 10 is kind of a number of completeness. God's judgments are complete. There's 10 last plagues. There's 10 commandments. Here is 10 nations judged. So God's over all, and he is the Lord of all, and all will be judged, and he's bringing us to a time when his nation will fill, his kingdom will fill all other kingdoms and overcome them. It'll be the only thing left, God's unselfish kingdom. All nations will be judged, but here's the payoff. God will take those that are willing to be faithful from all nations, and he'll bring them, bring them to his own throne. Oh, this is, this is going to be wonderful. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we want that your kingdom will fill this earth. We want to be subjects, members of participants in your kingdom. No nation will escape your, your things, whether it's the, the ones we think of, the big, the big shot nations or the little tiny nations, Lord. You are watching over all people. You are searching for all hearts. You want all hearts to be on your side. Oh, bless us, Lord, by bringing us up and letting us be part of your kingdom. Thank you for judging all nations. Thank you for redeeming as many as are willing so that whoever's willing can come to you and receive a new heart through Christ Jesus. This is something we're thankful for today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh, friend, God is on your side, and he's going to be on your side all day long if you'll just be on his side. God be with you this day.